Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today we have our draw tight hitch installed on our Toyota Sienna van. Now I have to say probably the most favorite thing of mine about this hitch is how hidden it is. When it's installed, you're only gonna be able to see the receiver here. I also really like the fact that it almost sits flush with the rear bumper. Now that's going to allow us to use folding accessories without really having to worry about any contact with our back bumper. Now this is gonna be a class three hitch, so it's gonna utilize that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. It's also going to have a reinforced collar for extra strength. It is going to use your standard size 5 8 pen and clip, which if you need one, you can pick one up on eTrailer.com. The safety chain loops are also really open so you're not gonna have any trouble using just about any size hook without making contact with anything else. Now the hole in front, that's going to allow us to use a J-pin. Now what a J-pin does is it's going to replace the pen and clip and it's also going to help eliminate any vibration or rattle that we have in our connection point. This hitch is also going to already have a bracket welded on and that's going to make it a little bit easier to mount our wiring if we choose to keep it outside. Now this hitch's maximum gross tongue weight is 525 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on our receiver tube. Its maximum gross trailer weight rating is 3,500 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight pulling on a receiver tube. So that's gonna be the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have on it. Now it can be used with the weight distribution system. However, the maximum weight capacities don't change. And it's always a good idea too, to check with your Toyota's owner's manual to make sure the Sienna can pull that much weight. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements. These are gonna help you when determining which hitch mounted accessories to use. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening is about 11 and a half inches. You're going to use that measurement to figure out if you need to get a ball mount with either a drop or a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the back bumper is about four and a half inches. You're going to use that measurement to figure out if any folding accessories you may have can be stored in the upright position without contacting the bumper. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we're going to need to remove this plastic splash guard. Now there's going to be a few different style fasteners holding it in place. We're going to go ahead and remove these ones first. There's going to be eight of these white pushpin style fasteners all along the front edge of the splash guard. To get them out, you can use a trim panel removal tool like this, or even a flathead screwdriver can do the trick as well. Just pry underneath the white head of it pull down and then it'll pop right out. Now here towards the bumper, there's going to be five 10 millimeter screws that we're gonna to need to remove. Now finally, there's gonna be four fasteners like this. The best way to get these out is with a Phillips head screwdriver and they can be kind of tricky sometimes. So what I found that works good is to, while you're spinning it, actually kind of put some light pressure pulling down on the splash guard and it'll pop free like that. Once we have it removed, we can just set it off to the side for now. Now eventually we're going to need to pull our bumper back a little bit to make enough room to get our hitch up in there. Well, what's gonna make that a little bit easier is if we remove these fasteners that hold our bumper cover to the wheel wells. So we're gonna have one over here on the driver's side. And to get it, use a flathead screwdriver or trim panel tool. And they're very similar to the white fasteners that we removed earlier. <laughs> you just pry down on the center portion of it. And get behind it and pull downward. Now we're gonna repeat that process on the other side, except there's gonna be two of them same fasteners. We're gonna to need to lower our exhaust down, but before we do that, I like to use a strap, and I put it on each spring on each side of our van, and tighten it up a little bit. 
That way when we do lower the exhaust, it can be controlled and won't fall down on us. To lower it, we're going to have to remove three rubber isolators just like this. One here by the tailpipe and one right here, as well as right here. Now the trick I like to use is to use some spray lubricant and soak the rubber isolator down. That way it makes it a little easier to pry off. I'm just going to use a pry bar. Get it off just like that. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the two remaining hangers. Now here on the frame rail, we're going to have one rubber plug and three black stickers. We're going to need to remove those. To get the plug out, you just take a flathead or a trim panel tool, just pop it on out. Now the stickers, you can just scrape away with the flathead. Now the other side is exactly the same. So once we have all these removed and clean, we'll go ahead and repeat that same process. Keep in mind, anything from this point on, if we do to one side, we'll do to the other. Now that our mounting locations are exposed, it's a good idea to clean the threads out. I'm just gonna use a little lubricant and a tube brush to clean it out. If you need one of these, you can find it on eTrailer.com. Now the instructions tell us to remove our rear bumper. However, I found a way to get our hitch installed that saves us a lot of time. And what we're gonna do is, along here, there's going to be two tabs just like this. What we're gonna do is actually bend those flat. And when we do this, we gotta be really careful because they're just glued on. So what I like to do is take something to hold and put pressure on this top portion and with the pair of pliers, just carefully work it down flat. Now before we put our hitch up into place, I'd just like to point out how we're going to use our hardware. All of the mounting points are going to use this same setup. So we'll take our bolt, a lock washer, Put the lock washer on first, and then a flat washer. We can slide it up through the hitch into the frame. Now with an extra set of hands, we can put our hitch into place. And we're gonna have to kind of pull our bumper out and work the hitch in behind it. Now we're going to wanna get one bolt on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch can support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. Now with all of our hardware in place and hand tight, we can snug them all down. Now using a torque wrench, we can torque all of our hardware down to specification. You can find that torque spec in your instructions. Now we can rehang our exhaust in the opposite way that we took it down. Let's push it up. and secure our rubber isolator hangers. With the exhaust up and secured, you can go ahead and remove our support strap. Now we're gonna go ahead and re-bend our tab straight. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're gonna to have to trim your underbody panel according to your instructions. Now, we're not going to do this because our customer requested that we leave it off. But if we were, we would trim about this area here. Now, what I personally like to do is cut as little as possible and kind of hold it up and test fit it to see how it looks. And if you need to make any more trimming adjustments, you would go ahead and do that then. Now, once you have your panel trimmed, you'd simply just reinstall it the same way that you removed it. 
And that'll do it for a look at an installation of the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2014 Toyota Sienna.